Um, good morning, New Life. It's me this morning. Yes, I know. It's, it's every day has its own problems. But anyway, to be honest with you, I want to thank New Life for the opportunity to speak this morning. It's a real privilege and an honour. And we're talking about Christmas, which is my favourite story. Everybody loves the Christmas story. So we're going to learn, hopefully, something more about Christmas and one of the main characters of Christmas, and that's Joseph. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come to you, Lord, and um, we can just uh, get to know you better. Help us, Lord, to love you, Lord, and know that you love us so much that you came to earth as a baby, Lord Jesus. The King of creation came to earth as a baby. So help us, Lord, to join in with you this morning. Help every word spoken to be anointed, Lord, and to glorify you, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, well, first thing I want you to do is to move your screens back a bit or sit up back from your screens. A bit farther back, Eva and New Cat. That's better now. You see, I look a lot better from a distance. <laughs> Don't worry, the jokes get worse. All right, so I'm just gonna look at two characteristics of Joseph. And one is his obedience, and one is the fact that he didn't procrastinate. That was a wonderful passage from Matthew that's just been read, and which we will return to later. But I want to add some more detail to the Christmas story. And uh, so I'm going to read from Luke 2, verse one to seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the premier inn. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm reading from the NIV. That's the Northern Ireland version. You're version probably just says the inn, but we're one step ahead. Okay, we, we don't know. Uh, uh, it was the Premier Inn, Travel Lodge. We didn't have Hotels.com in those days. So they couldn't stay in the inn. They had to stay in a stable. Joseph found a stable for them. But the opening lines were that Caesar Augustus issued a decree. Now, Caesar Augustus was the Roman emperor who reigned from 31 BC to 14 AD. He doubled the size of the Roman Empire so that it stretched all the way from Northumbria to India. And that was a big problem because they didn't know if they had enough food for everybody. Um, so he decided he'd have a census. This was the first census in the whole world. And that has been continuing ever since, even Next year, we will have a census in this country. But Augustus was the first one to have a census, and he had it every five years. And the reason was, if they thought there was going to be a shortage of food, they would raise the taxes. Governments never change. So, what year was Jesus born? Most, most uh, Bible scholars say that he was born roughly about 3 BC. That means that Jesus was born three years before Jesus was born. <laughs> They know this because, uh, again, of Augustus, the Roman emperor. And um, they, uh, historians believe that that's the year that the first census was carried out, somewhere between 2 and 4 BC. But what month was Jesus born? That's a more difficult one. Um, Luke 1, verse 26 to 27, uh, tells us about um, Elizabeth being pregnant, about... Um, Zachariah being told he was going to be a father. Well, Zachariah was um, a priest of the Abijah order. Now, there were 24 priestly divisions who served in the temple. Zachariah's 
um, time for serving in the temple was the month of Sivan, which is June. And that was the time that Elizabeth got pregnant. So six months later, Luke 21, Luke 1 tells us that Gabriel appeared to Mary. So that was probably in December. So that would mean that nine months later, Jesus was born. So probably September. But where was he born? Well, we know that he was born um, in a stable, but just read Luke 2, 1 to 7. It tells us that Jesus and Mary had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. So can you imagine traveling 35 miles on a donkey with Joseph walking beside Mary because she was heavily pregnant. I mean, she literally was giving birth in a few days. I was like 10 miles a day, 12 miles a day, it's three days walking for uh, not easy. And the Jews didn't want to do this. They hated the Roman uh, conquerors. They, didn't, they wanted to be, have independence. They wanted to have their own country back. Actually, this is why they were looking for a Messiah. But there's no record of Joseph complaining. He took his wife, he took Mary to Bethlehem to register there because uh, he was off the line of David and David was born in Bethlehem. It's interesting that the, Jesus, the bread of life, was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. It's also interesting that Jesus, the Lamb of God, was born in a stable that had a manger to feed the other livestock, maybe cattle, horses, maybe the donkey that they traveled on. I love those Christmas cars, you know, the nativity scene where everybody seems to have a halo. <laughs> I didn't even know what those little rings were when I was a child, and uh, but I was, always was amused by them. And I love the nativity scene. And you know, the cattle, the donkeys looking over Mary and Joseph's shoulders at the little baby and the major baby Jesus. It's beautiful. But in those days, 2,000 years ago, what were the Jewish culture and religious marriage traditions? Well, betrothal was considered to be as strong as a marriage itself. And um, it was the custom, the Jewish custom for the man to, um, when he was engaged, pledged to be married, that he would go and build a house for his wife, his future wife. When it was completed, his fiancée would, could move in and become his wife. In those days, most girls were engaged or even married between 14 and 16. In fact, if a girl was over 16, she was considered to be on the shelf. <laughs> even today in the Middle East, parts of the Middle East and North Africa, uh, if a Bedouin tribesman has a 16-year-old daughter, he puts a flag up on his tent to let everybody know, every prospective male husband know, that he has a daughter who's getting on a bit. She's 16, she needs to be married. So Mary was probably no more than 16. And Joseph, we, we can only guess, maybe mid twenties. Also under Jewish law, stepfather, foster father, adoptive father, which Joseph would be, had the same rights as a blood father and his children had those same rights too. But, and this is the sad bit, if an engaged girl is unfaithful, she has the same, faces the same punishment as if she had been married and usually ends in divorce and in some cases, as we know, much worse. We know from John 8 what happened when, to the woman who was caught in adultery, but Jesus came to save the people from their sins and he saved her as well, told her to sin no more. So she didn't have to face the ultimate punishment. So what about Joseph? Well, we know that he was obedient. He did everything that uh, was asked of him and that he didn't procrastinate. Joseph means God will add and God did add. He was the only man on earth ever to marry a pregnant virgin. virgin and he was the only man ever to be the earthly father of the Messiah, the Son of God. That's really something else. And what else do we know about him? We know that from Matthew 13 that he... Um, was a carpenter um, because the people in Nazareth said about Jesus, isn't this, meaning Jesus, the carpenter's son? So we know that Joseph was a carpenter. We know that Joseph lived in Nazareth uh, and Mary. His occupation, yes, he was a carpenter and um, he was poor. Now we know this because uh, they stayed in Bethlehem for eight days 
And after eight days, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. And then this was the time for uh, Jesus to be circumcised and taken to the temple and uh, the, the appropriate sacrifices given. So when Joseph and Mary went to the temple in Jerusalem, they offered a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Again, Joseph obeying the law. Now, in Levit Leviticus, it tells us that if parents are poor and can't afford to sacrifice cattle, sheep, lambs, whatever, they can take two doves or two young pigeons, such as they can afford. And uh, a Jewish website called Chabad uh, says that, uh, that it calls this the poor man's offering. So Joseph was poor, he was humble. Coincidentally, roughly 30 years later, Jesus would be in these very same temple courts and he cleared out all the money changes, all the merchants, all the, all the animals, because um, he was upset that the, his father's house, which is a house of prayer, had been turned into just a, almost like a market. So let's get back to the story of Matthew of, uh, that, we, that has just been read. In it, we know that um, Mary told Joseph uh, that she was going to be pregnant. Uh, well, I wonder, as a Hollywood scriptwriter, when Mary told Joseph, when did you tell Joseph and how did you tell Joseph? <laughs> so here's the Hollywood scriptwriter. Um, Mary comes to Joseph's house, just round the corner from her house, and um, Joseph is putting the finishing touches to the house he's building for Mary so they can get married soon. And she says, oh, hello, darling, wasn't expecting to see you today. Um, yes, Joseph, I have, I have something um, to tell you. Oh, what is, what is it? Um, well, um, an angel came last night, Gabriel, um, and he said, um, he said, I'm going to be the mother of the Messiah. Oh, fantastic, we can get married next week and we can have a baby and he'll be the Messiah. Um, sorry, darling, I'm already pregnant with the Messiah. Now, I have no, that's the end of it. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not going to get an Oscar, by the way. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. But how would I have reacted if I had found out that the girl that I loved was pregnant? And yelling, screaming, but not Joseph. Joseph was made of better stuff. He was faithful to the law, so he was going to obey the law. But he obviously also loved Mary, and he didn't want her to suffer public disgrace. He wasn't going to go to her family. He wasn't going to go to the high priest. And he didn't want the ultimate punishment. So he thought about, he had in mind of divorcing her quietly. And he went to bed that night thinking about it. And Matthew, in verse 20, Matthew 1 verse 20 tells us, it was after he had considered it, thought about it, that the angel came to him. And the angel told him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, which means he saves, because he will save his people from their sins. What did Joseph do? He woke up and he did exactly what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He was obedient. He didn't hang around. He didn't procrastinate. He obeyed the angel. I decided to ignore the gossip, the shame, whatever, and take Mary home as his wife and adopt her child as his own. Actually, Joseph had four dreams, but in this first dream uh, that he had, um, there were three things that were very important. The first one was the angel told, confirmed, that what Mary was telling him was the truth. That was confirmation. The second thing was the angel told him to marry Mary and to name the child Jesus. That was an instruction. And the third thing that the angel told Joseph was that Jesus will save the people from their sins. That was a prophecy, an amazing dream. In the second dream, in Matthew 2, verse 13 and 14, it was a warning. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to escape to Egypt. So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. 
Again, he was obedient. Again, he didn't procrastinate. He did it immediately, even though it was a 16-day walk to Egypt. So that dream was a warning. The third dream that he had was an instruction. The angel of the Lord appeared in the dream to Joseph and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go back to the land of Israel. So they left Egypt and went back. Obedient again. He didn't procrastinate. Joseph was a great man. And the last dream was also a warning. When he did go back to Egypt, he went to Judah, but he was warned in a dream not to stay there, but to go back to Galilee and, um, and Nazareth. And he did exactly that. Again, Joseph was an obedient man and he didn't procrastinate. So, God speaks to us through dreams. He gives instructions. He gives warnings. He gives advice. He gives prophecies. I want to tell you about a dream that I had. I actually had a dream and a vision, but they're both linked. Uh, in the vision, um, I was sleeping and I heard a voice call me. And the voice was from my left ear. And the voice said, And I sat up in my bed and I said, yes, Lord. And I saw the wall at the end of my room and there was no paintings on the wall, but there was this big white circular uh, picture that had appeared from somewhere. And in that picture, I saw um, the earth was burnt black, the trees were burnt black, the ends of the branches were pointed and they were sort of like scraping a purple sky. And I knew it was the end of the world. I also knew it was my life. And then another picture formed on the left hand side of the wall. And in that picture, I saw clouds. And in the clouds, there was this figure. And um, I could only see him from like the chest up. And he was a very powerfully built man and they had bald head, short white hair, and he was blowing a long golden trumpet. And um, I knew he was an angel. And that picture changed and went down onto the ground. And I could see in the ground, below the clouds, little dots coming from the left, coming from the right, coming from the top, coming from the bottom, and joining in the middle, and going up in this funnel up into the clouds. And they were going at incredible speed. I thought they were ants. And then I looked closely and I saw that they were people. And the voice spoke and said, the choice is yours. And I chose Jesus. I chose Jesus. He forgave my sins. He saved me. But anyway, I told everybody. And people were very worried about me, especially my friend Kenny. And Kenny says, look, you have to stop all this stuff. People think you're delusional, you're losing it. They're laughing at you. And I said, Kenny, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw you driving down the high street. Uh, he, was, he was a bus driver. And as you were driving, you suddenly gripped the steering wheel really tight and then you punched it with your fist and said, I have to kill Verdon. So you were going to take a knife and come into my room in the middle of the night and you were going to kill me. Why, Kenny? When I said, you're going to kill a burden, it was as if somebody had hit him. He flew back, hit the wardrobe, slid onto the floor and sat with his head between his knees, shaking his head and said, Verdon, I can't handle your peace. So I'm saying to you tonight or this morning, if you don't know Jesus, Jesus who came to this earth as a baby, ask him into your life now. He will save you from your sins. He will set you free. Don't procrastinate. Be like Joseph. Be obedient. Jesus is calling you. Amen.